What's going on guys? It is getting kind of crazy. The state of Montana is canceling unemployment. They're canceling unemployment. You want to know the reason why? They're canceling unemployment to address the worker shortage. Who actually said that giving money to people for doing absolutely nothing was going to be a problem. Here we are. I talked about this last year in my live streams. I knew, see, everybody is not a super productive go-getter. There are some people, if they can just get enough money to get by, they're going to take advantage of it. Montana is a small state, a uh, population of 1,600 and 69,000 people. So it's a really, really small state from a population base. And they were able to detect quite quickly that the unemployment benefits, and here's the thing. I don't know what unemployment is in Montana. I, I need to look at it. But here, here's the thing. Um, we're only talking about an additional $300 on top of whatever Montana state employment benefits were. So this has caused people, like here in Georgia, right now, trying to get an Uber, Uber is surging all the time now because there's a shortage of Uber drivers. And here, the, this, this is one of the, the biggest issues with um, giving people money because I, I know a lot of people push back and like, hey, you know, we need to take care of the people, you know, socialists, uh, some socialist policies. We need to have cheaper health care. We need to have free education. These are some, we already have that. But like, I'm about to tell you something. I had a friend who had a health crisis. He did not have insurance. Do you know that if you have a serious medical um, situation and you go to the hospital, they cannot turn you away? I know, I know a lot of folks don't know that. But I had a friend who had cancer, did not have insurance, and got treated. And got treated. So, essentially, you know, this whole notion of, like, if you're seriously sick in America, you could get treated for free. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people are clueless to how that goes and how that works. But you can. But this whole thing, I think, I don't know if other states are going to take such a radical move as the state of Montana. But here is one of the issues that we have. We have an issue with people. And I, I've addressed this in my The Socialist Nation. We have a segment, it ain't everybody, but we have a segment of the population that is sitting at home collecting this government money and they don't want to work. Now, here is where it gets bad. It gets really, really bad. The longer the people get this money, the more unfit they become to work. I, I talked about, you know, grandma being unable to take care of herself because granddad died and someone was kind of clueless essentially grandma never knew how to take care of herself grandma didn't know how to pay bills grandma didn't know about credit cards grandpa handled all of that so here's grandma she's 69 70 years old and she doesn't know how to do these things it's going to be very hard for her to learn how to do these things so what we're doing is creating a class of people who will not be able to take care of themselves. And this kind of feeds into the universal basic income theory that I have. I, I feel it's just around the corner. I feel universal basic income is like two years away because with the Democrats in office, with the stimulus money, all of these going, I, it's just a matter of time, in my opinion, just a matter of time. So we're going to have this 
class of people who are unable to take care of themselves and they're going to be at the whim of the government, they're going to be at the whim of, of agencies, and it's going to be bad. And if you're in that class of people, your life ain't going to be that good. It's just not going to be that good. So, this is the first round. We're, we're going to see what's going to happen because something else that has happened. We are out of PPP money. PPP money fund has been exhausted. And I have been seeing, because essentially uh, I was talking to a banker not too long ago. And she was talking about the number of people who were opening up business checking accounts to get this PPP money. I have seen the PPP fraud was epidemic. The, this is why it was kind of a challenge to get PPP. I could not get the PPP money because I did not have the documents and I wasn't going to manufacture documents because uh, they were asking for me to provide proof that I was in business in 2020. And I didn't have any proof. So I didn't get the PPP money. And they tightened it up because there was so much fraud. I predict Montana, we're going to see it in Montana, need to watch Montana, but with the exhaustion of this PPP money, you're going to see the economy take a dip because the government prop up was in effect, except this was the first time that the people, the average man, the common man, actually got some of this government prop up money first time ever ever and I think it's like a hit of crack you don't know how crack or cocaine or any of these drugs are going to affect you until you indulge right and for many people a lot of people got man that government money that was a good high it was a good high and we're going to see more of the weird economy because if I am correct, because right now I'm in the state of Georgia, I am seeing more new car drive out tags. That I'm like, literally, I can be just tooling down the street and I will run into a bunch of people who have brand new cars, right? And I'm just sitting there like, I remember there was a YouTuber who was selling his Turo fleet. He said he sold his cars literally in a week because people had cash money. People had cash money. All these people say, like, yeah, man, I'll come get it. I got cash money. I got cash money. So between the stimulus prop up, you know, some families got $7,000 cash money. So we're, we've been seeing in an infusion of cash come to the marketplace and I wonder what is going to happen now that the cash now that the um, things are about to run out they're about to be exhausted I, I wonder what's going to happen when this cash is no longer as plentiful or free flowing as it once was. I am real curious to what is going to go down, how this is going to shape up, what's this going to look like, um, how is this going to facilitate itself? Because here's the thing. And we're gonna say it. And this is one of my old sayings. Make sure I don't back up on this curb. Lust luxuries once tasted become necessities. You cannot give a large sum of people this money and they don't have to worry about paying it back. They can do whatever they want. They, I mean, man. It is crazy. So, well, in the state of Montana, they're canceling unemployment. I mean, that is huge. That is huge. 
And also, the PPP money is run out. And inflation. How many of you have gotten gas in the last few days? Inflation is real. In inflation is real. We're seeing inflation all across the board. We're seeing inflation in housing. House prices are going through the roof. This, I, like, if I was a person that was going to try to buy a house, if, you know, I was a regular person and I was out, I was trying to buy a $400,000 house, you know what I would do? I would sit on my money. I would stay in an apartment. I would st continue to rent. I would not buy a house right now. You're going to be buying at the top of the market. And if you buy this house and you stay in it for 10 years, you know, you should be good. But essentially, this, I think, is one of the worst times in history to buy a house. And people are jumping through hoops. Now, let's go ahead and say what type of house. If you're trying to buy a house, 400000 and below, absolutely worst price. Um, home prices in my price range, million dollar homes, I'm actually seeing them drop prices. So you can get some deals in the million dollar plus category, but in the $400,000 category, mm -mm. I feel that, you know, 500, 600, 700, 800,000, uh, these houses are starting to move, but I feel that the because they were on the market so long, because I personally know of a house that was on the market for 3 million. I know for a house that was on the market for 1.5 million, and these houses both took a year to sell. And there are two more that are for sale for 1.31, 1, 1 1, and they're, they're just sitting. So if you're like trying to get a house in those price points, you can possibly find a deal. But under 400K, Mm-mm, nope, nope, nope. And I'm, I want you to think about it. The homeowners have to do no concessions. They don't have to fix crap. It's like, I'm selling it as is. You're going to take it or you're not going to take it. So you got some people who are buying houses who are going to have to do some renovations and put more money into a house that, in my opinion, they paid too much for. They just paid too much for it because this isn't sustainable. This isn't sustainable at all. And one of the things that I want you guys to really take note of, like I said, if you're an average person, you know, I would not be buying a house right now. I would not. I would sit, wait it out because this is something that's going to happen. Can't say when it's going to happen, but it's going to happen. Right now, from the federal forbearance we have like 4 million homeowners and forbearance and probably another four to 5 million who are in quasi forbearance. They haven't signed up for the forbearance program, but because they're not foreclosing, they're just riding it out. So we've got close to 10 million homes where people are not paying their mortgage. At some point that's going to filter into the market at some point. Probably not 2021. The government prop up the stimulus money. I actually suspect there will be another stimulus package this year. I would be shocked if there isn't another stimulus package. Trump's not in the office. The Democrats can ram another stimulus package through with reconciliation. It just depends on what happens in these coming months because I'm going to be watching what happens with Montana. That is really significant that Montana is canceling. They're canceling unemployment because these people don't want to go to work. These people don't want to go to work. And this is going to create a, a fracture in America because um, we already have many different segments of America. We already have, I, I'm part of the capitalist class, which I think is the best class because I'm in it. But um, we're going to have a really emerging, growing underbelly of America. 
you know, if you are making minimum wage and you rather stay at home and get unemployment than to get a job, that you're going to be part of the um, lower class underbelly that is shaping up in America. And this is going to create neighborhoods. This is going to create school systems. I mean, it ain't just like these people ain't working. They collecting unemployment. No, 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 no. This is going to create ramifications throughout the spectrum of that lower class underbelly. This is going to create all types of disharmony. This is going to create some crazy stuff. We're going to, like right now, crime is going through the roof. Crime is going through the roof. Crime is an all-time high. And like here in the city of Atlanta, right? Um, they don't have enough cops in the city of Atlanta. I would not, I wouldn't be a cop right now. I wouldn't want to be a cop right now. The city of Atlanta is literally 100,000 cops, not 100,000, 1,000 cops short, which is significant. Thousand, you 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 got a slot for a thousand cops that you don't have. That's significant. So what we're going to see is employers who are having a uh, low wage jobs. They're going to struggle. They're going to struggle to hire people. They're going to struggle greatly to hire people. They're going to struggle. Um, They're going to struggle. I mean, the struggle is going to be real. The struggle is going to be real. And um, one of the things that we will see is people, business owners who rely on low wage, unskilled labor are going to struggle. They're going to they're going to go through some stuff. They're going to go through some stuff. Like uh I was getting one of the cars for Turo washed and I noticed that literally half of the workers did not show up. And I got a comment like uh people are like, "You know, man, no one's lining up." Like, "All right. Look, let's have this conversation." All right. If you have not prepared yourself for higher income, you can only work these low wage jobs. That is not on the people who are issuing the jobs. That is on you. That is on you. That is on you. And one of the things that you have to understand and one of the things that you should acknowledge is uh, I got a video talking about this is America. There is no reason for you to be poor in present day America. In present day America, you can do an eBay business, you can create a service business, there's something. You may not be, quote, a millionaire. You might be working seven days a week, okay? You might be working seven days a week but you won't be poor. You will be eating. The lights will be on. And this right here, as someone who experiences time freedom, any day, I just want to say like, I ain't working today. I can do that. I don't have to ask anybody. I don't have to beg nobody. If I wanted to take two weeks off, I could do that. And essentially, as someone who has had time freedom for 12 years, because when I was in the storage auction business, I did not have time freedom. I did not have time freedom because the auctions happened when they happened and I had to be there. Sometimes I had to get up at six o'clock in the morning to be at the auction at 8.30 because it was on the other side of town. So I did not have the kind of time freedom that I currently have with um, what I got going on. And this pandemic gave people time freedom and due to the artificial bubble of no foreclosures, no repo man, 
government stimulus. They were able to live in a position where they didn't have to worry about losing their car, house foreclosed, no evictions, and they got a government check. And this went on for months. These people are now like, right now, uh, there's an article in Medium where so many people who are in a position to retire, they're out because they got a taste of that time freedom, that freedom to do what they want, when they want, how they want. They got a taste of it and they're like, I cannot go back. Luxuries once tasted become necessities. So we're going to see a reshaping of America. Like the top 10%, they're going to be good. They're going to be good. They're going to retire. They're going to live off their portfolios. They're going to be good. Now, the other 90%, depending on if you're in that lower third of the 90%, the lower third's about to get effed. It's going to be hard. It's going to be very, very hard. And a lot of people are not set up for this they're not ready for this because i want you to think and let's let's go ahead because i don't know i'm not like i did get some stimulus money i got the edil loan uh but I, I honestly i didn't need it i didn't need it so i don't know what it's like to be living on the stimulus money but let's say you've lived in this artificial bubble for a year where you didn't have to worry about being evicted you didn't have to worry about being foreclosed on. You didn't have to worry about the repo man coming to take your car. And you got some government checks. You're not going to be suited to go back to working in America. You, you man, it's, it's going to be hard for you to go back to working your 40 hour job when also. And this is something else that I talked about last year. And I said it was going to be very, very dangerous. And here we are. When you pay more people more money than they were making working to sit at home. And. Um, this this created like these folks, they're going to be so messed up. They're going to be so out of bounds. They're going to be so unfit to work because it's like, wait a minute. I was making more money sitting at home watching soap operas than I would come working 40 hours for you. Nah, miss me with that. And like I said, we, we have a certain segment of the population that's lazy. Just, just go ahead and keep it the buck. They're lazy. And with that segment of the population, with that um, in mind, that's going to be the segment of the population that is going to catch the most hell. They're going to catch the most hell. They're going to um, go through some stuff. They're going to have some issues. And this is the coming of socialist America because these people have been on government support for a prolonged period of time they're not going to know how to fend for themselves. And this is why I feel that universal basic income is coming. I just feel it. It's literally round the corner and it's coming. So that's all I got for you guys. Let me know what you guys think about Montana canceling unemployment. That's, that's huge. That's huge. Let me know what you think about that. And I will see you in the next one. Once again, if you want to become the art of holding, and I'm going to do something else. I'm going to create some additional uh, training for the people in the corporate toolbox and the art of holding. And if you're already in it, you're going to get it because I'm, I'm getting ready to do some stuff because uh, I have figured out some stuff after I had to spend money to buy data. So the links are below if you want to be part of that experience. And I will talk to you guys in the next one.